Hello, and welcome everybody to Flickr Effect. This is a podcast where each week we chat about the world of film, television, and pop culture. This is episode number 193, and we're recording on Sunday, November 20th, 2016. I'm David Lott. Joining me this week is Bobby Jackson. What's up, guys? Yasha Wilson. Hey, hey, hey. And Michelle Curry. Good day, everyone. Good day. I, don't know, I don't know where that came from, but that's just what happened. Good day. That just Good happened. Day, mate. Nice. All right. Totally there. just happened. <laughs> I don't even know why. Can you rock that accent for the rest of the show? That'd be awesome. You want me to try it? Yeah, why not? I don't know if I can. Nah, I don't. It's cool. I mean, if you want to. I mean, a British accent I could rock, an Aussie accent for an hour? I don't know if I could do that. You know, if you change your mind. I'm not that point, talented. It was in China. That caught me off guard. Uh, <laughs> you know what? It caught me off guard, I'm, and I'm the one that did it. I'm totally thrown off now. I'm uh, sorry. No, it's so fine. movies. It's cool. It's cool. We, what do we do here? That's right. We talk about movies. Um, we've got some news as usual to talk about today. Some new trailers. I'm sure one in particular that Michelle can't wait to discuss. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm not discussing anything. <laughs> um. But of course, we usually like to start off with what we've been watching this week. And a little film called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them finally hit theaters. And uh, yeah, we all saw it. Um, I didn't even think about getting the bowl. Oh, it's so far away. <laughs> oh, get it. Okay. Come on, you can do it. There you go. You made it. Gonna, Look at that. I'm going to need the Yasha, though, version of... <laughs> I like the Yasha version. Of I mean, the I mean, the computerized version of your voice is kind of cool too. What? That, what's me? That's not what? me. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Michelle. What are you doing? Pulling the curtain. Behind God. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Yasha too. It's good. Keeps it fresh. So yeah, we're going to talk about Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Uh, I have a feeling we'll want to talk about spoilers. So uh, if we do, we will give you, the listener, plenty of warning before we do that. So if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want to hear any spoilers, don't worry. We'll, we'll let you know before we get there. But uh, yeah, with that, the Bowl of Destiny. Let's see who gets to talk about this movie first. Well, are we going to go into talking about some other stuff that we saw or are we going right into we'll go right into this. the feature review? We'll do the feature I'm ex- review. I'm excited to talk about, about Fantastic Okay. Me too. What I'll, what I'll do, uh, you know, if if you're listening, you want to skip spoilers, but you want to listen to other stuff, I will, I'll throw show timing into the show notes. Um, so just, you know, whatever podcast app look you're at, using. Look at you, smarty just, pants. Just look at the notes and you can see where to jump to. Such a smart, smart man. I'll make that happen. Smart. Very cool. Goodness. So uh, with that said, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, who do we get to hear from first? Yasha. Oh, fun! Because you just you just saw this, didn't you? Like literally, like twenty minutes ago. Uh, no, it was a, more of a couple of hours. Oh, okay. I got out around twelve thirty. I think Bobby was the one watching the later show this afternoon. Ah, uh, so I'm curious. I don't know that I've we've ever really talked about Harry Potter movies in general. Like, I don't know what your thoughts are on the Harry Potter franchise. Uh, my thoughts are it's a fun story. Um, it's so damn creative. Um. I can relate it to uh, another movie that I, I saw years ago. And if I bring it up, um, I'll have to look it up and I'll come back to it. But when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this reminds me of this movie. It's a movie that stars Rob Lowe. Um, but anyways, that being said, I like the Harry Potter franchise. I think it's a fun, imaginative story. I think it's creative. I think J.K. Rowling is just, wow. Just, I mean, some of the stuff that she pulls out of her you know, out of thin air, just like, it's, it's so, it's so impressive. Like it's such a fun story to me and I can understand why they want to stretch this out to be five movies instead of just three. I enjoy this wizarding world. I enjoy the special effects. I enjoy the made up words. I enjoy the, the dialogue, the, the people bouncing off of things. Um, this one especially had a bunch of uh, new characteristics that we didn't really, we don't really get a chance to see um, with the, I'm sorry. I, don't know. I think you're hearing my child scream in the background. Oh, okay. <laughs> as long as the child's screaming and it's totally fine. Yeah, yeah it's, great. It's, it's not like uh, terrible, <laughs> like I'm dying screaming. It's I'm being okay, chased no. around the living room, kind yeah, of happiness. That kind of thing. Yeah, uh, she's, oh, fine. Okay. she's fine. All right. Sorry. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. Anyways, going on. Um, 
I enjoyed the movie. I did think it was a little slow for whatever reason um, when I first started watching it. But that being said, it's like I think it was probably had to do with where I was seating, seated, s- sat, where I was seating, <laughs> sitting. There we go. Uh, I'm sorry. You have to forgive me. Um, I was in the very, very front row of this movie theater, mm. and I really? was not happy yeah. about that. And I was really, really mm. frustrated because um, I went in using my Fandango app. And when I bought the ticket, I, you know, could turn my phone off. Well, you know, put it on sleep or whatever. And I walk in to try and I bring my Fandango app up and it doesn't say that I purchased the ticket. So I had to sit there and play with my phone for like 10 minutes while I sat there and watched hordes of people just basically fly by me to go get seats mm. in this movie theater. And so I didn't want to go to the later one. They said they would upgrade me. I just said, you know, I forget it. I'll just watch this early one because I had stuff to do. So anyways, my seat wasn't that great. Um, I still enjoyed it. I would like to see it again in a more respectable place of where I usually sit to enjoy a movie because I think I will enjoy it a lot more. Um, I thought the spoilers were a lot of fun. Um, and I'll, we'll talk about spoilers of what I thought was a spoiler. Um, the dialogue, the characters, the costumes. Um, Newt was unbelievably awkward and just kind of weird, but I really, really enjoyed his character. I, I enjoyed the movie. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next. Very cool. All right, moving on. Uh, who's next? I'll make this quick. Uh, Bobby. Hey, number two spot again. Number two spot. Uh, well, going back to your original statement of how people thought about the Harry Potter series, I came into the whole thing late uh, as far as the the fandom. It, people had already been reading the books. I don't know what book they were on by the time the first movie came out. But I think by the time the first movie came out, I want to say I, I s- either started reading the first book or it might have been right after the first movie came out that I started reading the first book. And I, I, I ended, ended up getting through the first book. Didn't read any of the other books beyond that. But the series as a whole, I really, really loved it. I thought it was a good progression from movie to movie. And just the, as Yasha mentioned, the imagination that J.K. Rowling has to bring all these characters and this whole entire world and universe together is pretty spectacular. And it's just really fully realized and and it just inventive and fun and, and just magical in all respects. So going into the um, Fantastic Beasts, you're kind of expecting that same sort of magic from J.K. and the 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 world that you, you're supposed to get when you go into this Harry Potter universe. And with that being said, I actually did not like the movie. So I was really sadly disappointed that I didn't like it because I had anticipation that I would be transported back into this world again. And... I don't know, for whatever reason, this movie fell real flat for me. It just was like, uh, I didn't like really the characters that were involved. I didn't really like the story. Um, I do like uh, Newt and his character and his awkwardness and everything. So it's not to say that I wouldn't watch a sequel and maybe see something, maybe some more progression come out of it. But with this one, it just, it did not hit it for me. I don't, I I didn't feel... That, that magical touch. Maybe it was because these were all adults and it just didn't feel the same as when you have these kids and their own self-discovery. And I think Michelle made mention of it like last week or so, something about, you know, having kids and having them discover things, these, these things like that. And it just, this one, it just didn't have that to me. And um, it just had, I guess it lost that sense of wonder. I think that I was used to with the Harry Potter series and this just didn't have it. And um, I think the the other thing that kind of ruined the experience for me as well uh, was the the look of it. The I think my theater something may have been wrong with the projection or the screen because it was dim. It it felt really dim, like it wasn't enough light in terms of the, what what I was seeing on screen. And I'm, I'm sure it must have been the theater because I can't imagine the movie itself was like that. But 
uh, aside from that, just what I was getting in, in terms of what I saw, it just didn't live up to what I was hoping for. So that's a bummer, but uh, I won't hold that against a sequel and would still go out and watch a sequel, hoping for something better the second time around for myself. Well, wow, Bobby, so you really are going to use the actual sentence like, I did not like the movie. Like, usually you'll say something to the effect of, like, I didn't enjoy it that much, or I was expecting something more, I was a little disappointed, but you're actually flat out saying that you did not like the movie. Yeah. I did. I didn't. I, I was really bored, and I was, like, looking at my watch within the first, like, 40 minutes. I was ready to go. I mean, I, and I never have that feeling with movies in general, because... I, I know what I'm getting myself into, and it's either living up to its expectations or it's just not uh, something that really has me uh, sort of antsy. And and this did. It just it just I didn't feel it. I wasn't feeling it, and it, and that's what sucks. And that's why I, I would say I didn't like it. There's as- aspects of it that I do like, and some things that I thought were done kind of well and nice but overall my experience coming out of it was like man that bummed me out i was really hoping for more and i just didn't really i wasn't feeling it okay so maybe actually it wasn't just my seat because there were parts of the movie in the first beginning like i said where i was actually relatively bored as well like i thought it was a little slow like it was the building of the characters and everything like that and i was trying to get past that but i just kind of sat there and i was like well this is actually kind of slow i was expecting a little bit more um, but wow, um, I mean, I still ended up enjoying the overall outcome of the movie and where they went and the special effects and, the, you know, and whatnot. So I'm surprised to hear that you just did not like it. Yeah. And I'll get into more in spoilers, but just my overall impression was that, uh, I mean, I, I was disappointed just putting it at, at that point is just disappointment compared to what I would have hoped for. All right. Well, uh, Michelle. Cool. Um, well, I mean, I'm I'm definitely different than Bobby. I I enjoyed this movie a lot. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Actually, I can't. I will say I cannot say I loved this movie. Um, but I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with the story. I'm very happy with, I think, with the direction that the series is going. Um. And and I will say, and I feel kind of bad because uh, it sounds like you guys had really bad viewing experiences. Whereas um, I was in the uh, like Dolby digital surround sound crazy awesomeness room, <laughs> and the picture clarity was spectacular. Well, we also had really good seats because there were uh, reserve seats, so it was like it, it was good. It was a really really great experience. the The sound quality was spectacular, as you would obviously hope for in a Dolby. Um, but yeah, just visually, like the crispness of the the film itself. And I I like the, I think it's a David Yates kind of thing. I think it's kind of this dreary, kind of almost like a dull look that he gives to some of the things as a mood setter. And then he interjects color very specifically, like with certain characters will have certain color palettes that they kind of live within. And that's about their personality in a way. And then you know, during different moods, the palette of the color kind of shifts and changes into different like forms and mediums. And I feel like he kept that going through this film. And I enjoy that. Like, I like that. I like kind of having the different, the different, I guess, I don't know, I can't like warmth and depths of color that kind of come in and out. But um, I think storyline wise, it's good. It's really hard to, I think, step into a completely new group of people in a way. I mean, like we know of them, we've heard their names, you know, and, but we're, we're, we're completely introduced to all of them. They're all fresh faces. They're all fresh characters, personality types, histories, backgrounds, you know, um, it, and it's weird. Cause I will say the one thing that was kind of almost jarring to me as I watched it. And I think it's, it's kind of like what Bobby was saying, like, you know, you're watching Harry Potter, you're watching the kids, learn the tricks of their trade like they're growing and learning and finding what their specialties are these people have already done that they're adults they're fully formed they know their magic in and out they know what they're good at they know what they're not good at like they know how to 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 function properly as a wizard and so you really are kind of thrown right into like yep they're just fixing that yep they're mending that yeah they're just 
they're breaking this or they're fighting this or they're shooting you know, like they're just they're doing stuff like it's just happening it's very organic in a way like you're just like wow it's really they're just okay whereas the kids like they're learning things things go wrong all the time and they're constantly adjusting and so in a way it's it's jarring i think for being so used to seeing the characters on screen slowly develop their skill set whereas right now they're like they're just in it they just do it like it just happens so that for me was a little weird but at the same time it's not like it's it's a bad thing it's just it was like this is it's a different way of seeing this kind of world this storyline you know um but like i like it i like the setting of the 20s in new york city i think it's fabulous and overall i'm very happy with all of the characters that are so far established with the storyline um and i say that with a little bit of hesitation there's one character that i'm not feeling and it's not like the actress's fault or anything but the character of tina i don't know what it is yet she throws me off but i like everybody else like newt and tina's sister i think is awesome <laughs> i was done with that but like yeah i don't know it's kind of i don't know it's interesting i think it's just gonna take a, a movie or two for me to really kind of like really get to know her and feel better about or maybe i'm thinking of mary lou i can't think you're no no, no. Catherine I'm thinking of Tina. yeah kid. and i liked her i'm just not sure i think i'm just gonna take some time to warm up to her character she's just very different i think than what i'm used to in the wizarding world kind of way like she just seems like she's burdened in a way with something but like newt's it's interesting, and I, I'll get into it in spoilers, but like, I really enjoy Newt's character because I think it's kind of a different one than what we've seen on the, the Wizarding World, and I'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, I'm very pleased with this. I'm very happy with this. I like seeing <laughs> that, and I'll get to it. The Fantastic Beasts are fantastic. I was very happy with them. They were odd and strange and adorable and somewhere ugly and weird but in a cute way it was just kind of fun and i liked it i liked seeing them kind of visualized like that it was it was kind of cool kind of made me feel like a kid like wow like that oh, look at that like that was fun for me so yeah but i'll talk more in spoilers cool i guess that leaves me um yeah I, it's interesting to me i guess that you know yasha and bobby you're both like Bobby even more so seeming kind of negative on the movie. Uh, but also noting your like cinematic experience, theater experience. And yeah, I can agree that like the experience, cause I saw it with you, Michelle, uh, that we had in that Dolby cinema theater was one of the best, uh, theatrical experiences I've ever had. Yeah. Um, and then like you, I enjoyed the film quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. There's a part of me that wants to be like, man, you guys need to go, or Bobby, you need to go see this again, like in a better theater <laughs> or something. But, well, Yasha uh, definitely should. Front well, row yeah, is front. her good night, man. man. I don't, How did you? I can't even. I can't even so remember tall. the last time I. I think the last time I saw a movie front row was oh. Gladiator. I got stuck in the front row oh. for that, which was a terrible experience. That's a nightmare. Um, yeah. No, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I gotta go see it again. Yeah. Like, because I. I I'm telling you, I was not happy. Oh. Like I just looked at them, like I was so bitter. Like and it wasn't their fault. Like I was, right. I was so mad, and I would have cussed out the person taking the tickets. I was ready to cuss out the manager. I was just, and they were so nice. Like I was just like, ugh. Damn, and I was like, hey, nice. we, man, we can upgrade you to the eleven o'clock show, and it'll be a three D show. And I'm like, no, I don't want to watch it in three D. I want to watch it in two D, and I want to watch it in the theater that I plan on at ten o'clock this morning. Right. Like. <laughs> I'd have been like, y'all throwing my lunch and we got a deal. <laughs> I, had, I was like, I'm holding my popcorn. I have my little breakfast sandwich. I have my soda. What makes you think I want to sit here around for an hour and wait till 11 o'clock to watch it then? No, everything's going to be messed up. You're throwing off everything. I'll just go watch it and be miserable and stew in my own anger. But, uh, but yeah, I I enjoyed the film. Um, and to go back, uh, my Harry Potter uh, you know opinion, and I think I've probably shared it on here before, is I mean, I enjoyed the films quite a bit. And there's no doubt that the David Yates films, those last four films in the Harry Potter series were my favorite, too. Uh, so, and I had read, I've read all the books. I, I love the books. And uh, I wouldn't call myself like a diehard, I don't know what you call a Harry Potter fan. Do they have a title? Like, I don't know. Potheads? Potheads? Potterheads? Not, not, not I, don't I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> so I'm just making that up. I don't no, know. No, I know. 
<laughs> that would be too perfect if it were Potter. It's just kind of the the Potter fandom. Yeah, I don't know, but I don't know. um, I, I wouldn't call myself like a diehard Harry Potter fan, but yeah, I like the movies quite a bit, and I wasn't sure what to expect with this, and you know, it's it's different. It's not Harry Potter. Sure, it's the same world, but you know, what am I going to make of a movie in this world that's not about the Harry Potter story? And yeah, I I dug it. I had been hearing a lot of that uh, same opinion out there before I saw it that, you know, you'll fall in love with the the beasts in it. And yeah, they, I was I was kind of skeptical of that. Part of me is like, really? Like, what about these creatures is really going to be that interesting? And no, they were actually, they were quite interesting. And I agree with you too, Michelle, that uh, I t- totally dig it, watching a movie set in 1920s New York all day long. Like, oh, yeah. So there's that too that I enjoy just seeing it visually. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really dug it. I mean, if I have any uh, any negatives about it, it's not so much about this film, but maybe the future of these films. And I guess I really, I don't want to talk about that yet, but... But with that said, I don't know. I, I I liked the film quite a bit. I I quite enjoyed the experience. And yeah, there's no doubt. I I thoroughly enjoyed the the theatrical experience. Um, mm-hmm. I hadn't been in a Dolby Cinema theater before, which if you're not familiar, it it basically is a, a theater that incorporates Dolby's projection system, Dolby Vision, with their surround system, which is Dolby Atmos. And uh, it was it was quite quite good. There's no doubt that when Rogue One tickets go on sale, I will be trying to buy them in that theater. Um, absolutely. So, yeah, I, I was very happy with that for sure. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I dug the film. I'm happy. So we got three three A's and one nay. It sounds like it. it sounds like I mean, it. I'm still surprised like that Bobby is just, you know, he didn't like it. Like, I mean, I, mean, I can see. I mean, it, part of the... Uh, Part of the experience, like you were talking about, Michelle, that I didn't touch on, but I was thinking of, was one of the reasons why I liked it too. Is it jumps into you know the the knowledge of that you know these characters, and I like the addition of the New York base of operations for magic. Like you know, we're so used to seeing the Ministry of Magic and Hogwarts and stuff like that, and these people know what they're doing, and it's just you know accepting that they know what they're doing, and you know it's just here's a whole nother organization of magic and you know, that everything like that. I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely get into like visually like different sections of the film that I loved in spoilers. I'll talk more about that. Cause I don't want to get anything away with that, but like, I will agree with Bobby. I, and, and you said it too a little bit. I feel that the pacing was a bit slow, especially at first. I will. I totally agree with you guys. Like there was, I was definitely sitting there kind of going, I feel like this, like, like when it very first starts, I felt like, wow, we're getting thrown right into it. Awesome. And then somewhere it kind of kind of slows down for a little bit and then it slowly starts building back up again. But there was there was a solid, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes pretty early on where I was kind of like, this could go a lot faster. But yeah. <laughs> I, I still really enjoyed it. Like I was still but like I'm I was totally long for the ride. Like I'm I know like you're here, we're establishing characters and their personality traits and their, and a little bit of their backstory. Like we're getting it. Like so you, you just kind of have to deal with that with the first film of a series. But at the yeah. same time, like, I I was okay with it. I mean, like, it's not like it's great. But, yeah, I fully agree the pacing could have been a smidge faster in certain areas. Well, I guess with that, we'll move to spoilers. I don't think anybody has anything else. Uh, so, yeah, if you haven't seen the film yet and you are listening to this, uh, we're going to talk about spoilers for Fantastic Beasts and where to find them from this point on. And as I mentioned earlier, if you do want to listen to the rest of the show and skip this, just check out the show notes in your podcast app or however you're listening to this. And I'll, I'll put timings in there so you can see where to jump to. All right, spoilers. I guess we'll just go in the same order that we just did. So, Yasha, uh, your thoughts on the film with spoilers? I, um, I'm i just going to get right to the big one. Seeing Johnny Depp at the end blew my mind. Blew my mind. <laughs> I, I was so surprised. And I knew that he had been confirmed for the sequel. I knew that he was going to be involved in the movies. I mean, we all talked about it. I think we talked about it last week as like one of the something cool things happened or... I know we mentioned it at one point, or maybe it was just via text, but when he showed up at the end, and I was like, no. 
Like they already got him to film a scene. Like I was so surprised. I just, I was, I was so taken back. Yeah. The, the um, rumor was out there that he was doing a cameo. And oh, I didn't even know that. that, there was, was, that I mean, was, and that had just come out that there was rumor he'd done the cameo. And so, but that could be done in so many different ways. Like, you know, it could have been like a flashback, you know, or a flash forward or, you know, there's just so many ways and the way he did it. Yeah. I, was, I thought it was great. I was so blown away. I was like, oh, that's cool. I was like, I'm so excited to see him. Like, and then when I finally started to put the connections and, you know, put the pieces together and I'm like, oh my God, is Johnny Depp going to play the bad guy in the next movie? And I didn't know that they were going to have him be like, you know, like you start to kind of guess. And I was just like, oh, he's, you know, he's wearing a mask or he has some sort of spell. Colin Farrell has some sort of spell, something that's covering up his real face. And that's going to end up being Johnny Depp. So he's going to be the big bad. And then when it finally came to light, like, I mean, it's not like I figured this out, you know, 30 minutes into the film. I figured it out like, oh, I was like, oh, 45 seconds before they actually did the big <laughs> reveal. It was like when I was I started thinking about that and I was like, oh. And then when they did it, I was like, this is great. Like, and I love Colin Farrell as a bad guy. Like he was really good. Like he was ominous. He was, he was menacing. Um, I love the dialogue and the framework when, when they were talking and when he was interviewing Newt and said, so this is useless without the child. And he's like, well, useless is a really interesting way to say that. Why would anybody want to use this? Like, I just thought it was brilliant. I thought that was so much fun. That was one of my favorite scenes in the movie aside from the big reveal that Johnny Depp is the big bad. And I, I, I thought it was great. It was just, those are, those are the big spoilers that stuck in my head. Cool. Uh, Bobby. Um, okay. I'll start with the big reveal and say that the, that kind of was one thing that disappointed me it was Johnny Depp's character in there. Uh, not that he was in there per se, although I, I, you could tell in, at least in the showing that I was at, People didn't, I don't know if they didn't like it or whatever, but when they showed that it was Johnny Depp, there was like laughter in my uh, audience, which was, I thought was weird. Really? Um, yeah. Like, I don't know if they thought it was a silly joke that he was in there or what, but um, yeah, people laughed. And I just wow. took it as, I, I took it as, of course, you know, that I kind of knew in that moment, well, I, I kind of knew from the beginning because they show his character from the back and the blonde hair or whatever, uh, that's probably Johnny Depp. And then, you know, there's that Grindelwald character and knowing that Johnny Depp had a cameo, like you said, Michelle, you just piece together, piece the pieces together to know that it's him. Now, what I wasn't expecting was that he was actually Colin Farrell in <clears throat> disguise, which is the part that I actually didn't like because I feel like that kind of undercut Colin Farrell's character and it would have been kind of cool to see Colin Farrell come back in a sequel along with Johnny Depp and them being kind of like evil partners or something. So I, I, that kind of like I felt like it messed things up for me in terms of seeing Colin Farrell in the, in the film. But um, working backwards and, and really kind of getting into what made me not really like it so much. I think it was the aspect of the story that I was given was not, uh, was not sort of the story that I don't want to say that what I was expecting. Cause I didn't really have any expectations to it, but I think the story that I, I was sort of hoping for would have been more about Newt and him trying to reclaim all these creatures that get loose. And with the help of the 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 New York version of their their police or their wizard police help him reclaim these um, creatures, and so when I see the 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 female protagonist in the movie and she's kind of like on off on her own doing her own thing and and kind of trying to uh, chase down Newt. And then Newt not just explaining, hey, this is what's going on and I need some help. And it was just like one of those episodes of a TV show when if everybody just talked to each other, you could probably figure things out and get it done quicker. But people want to have their own agendas and keep their own secrets. And then so it leads to confusion and, and more things and everything. So a lot of the characters within it and a lot of the situations that they were in just it felt too plot driven and, and not organic per se. And so that kind of bugged me. But um, I think mostly the the things that I did like actually was 
beyond all of that, I still like Newt's character. I still like um, the Beast, or at least, you know, some of the Beasts. Some of them weren't here or there for me, but there was definitely some that had personality and had their own sort of flair and, and makes you in, endured, endearing to them. And so I like that aspect of some of the Beasts. And I also liked um, the character of what's his name Kowalski, uh, yeah. but more towards more towards the the not end but middle. Like after he kind of got out of that haziness that he was in and just really sort of went along for the ride, uh, I, I, he kind of warmed up to me. And then I liked his relationship with the, the sister of, of of Tina or what I can't remember the character's name, but the the one who could read minds. I liked yeah. their little. You know, developing. Queenie. What's her Queenie. name? Josh? Queenie. 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 So I that's like. Right. I like their relationship. So it, it was that. That's the stuff that I definitely did like. But it was just a lot of more, I guess, story elements and, and some of the other characters. And as Michelle said, the the main sister that I'm still not quite there with her yet either. So overall, it just kind of led to a sour experience of what I was seeing, but. It's this world, it's this universe, and that was that story. So I feel like within a second story and more development, it could still swing around to me coming into the series and really kind of loving it. But um, this was an isolated, at least I'm, I'm feeling or thinking this is an isolated um, situation as to where I didn't kind of get what I was hoping for. And I'll move on from that and hope for better in the sequels. Uh, Michelle, your thoughts? I'm going to try to make this not as long as I probably have in my head. but Hey, man, you talk about whatever you want. Man. Okay, so I didn't really say anything. But yeah, like I've read the books. I've seen all the films. I've seen all the films multiple times. Um, I'm with you, David. Like I definitely enjoy David Yates' films the most. Um, and I mean, I can't say that like I'm a big fangirl. But I mean, like I feel like I'm very familiar with the Harry Potter series for the most part. I mean, I can't name everything or every creature or every spell or whatever, but there are people that know these things. <laughs> but um, you know, for me, it was refreshing to see things like for hear, to hear them say certain words and have those spells happen. It was like, oh, this is this is this is fresh, and it makes me feel happy to like have that in my life again, like to hear those things. Um, Okay, so I guess I'll just start from kind of the big reveal, like we were saying. I'm with Yasha, whereas like I didn't start piecing together that that character was actually going to be Johnny Depp at the end, and then it was like just a, like a, like a minute before they actually did the reveal, I was like, so they're not killing him; they're hauling him off to oh snap! Like it, like I literally let out an audible like oh yeah, like it hit me, and then they did the reveal, which was really awesome. And like it's weird that Bobby had this audience reaction of people laughing like i feel like our audience was kind of like yes like everybody was kind of like there was like a feeling i don't think it was really like loud but i could tell like everybody was kind of like yeah this is happening you know like it was cool like it was it's fun and um it sets the it sets the next four films up basically because he's yeah he's the villain um so i liked it i liked the way they did it i liked all of it and yeah i agree colin farrell was a good villain but at the same time like I'm I'm cool with moving past him. It's fine. Like he wasn't that bad of a villain, I guess. In a way, and then in that aspect, like he's gonna develop even more so. Um, I think for me, it was kind of like little Easter eggy things, like just talking about like people who are involved in little things, and you know, like learning a little, like kind of finding out about Albus's sister and her being an Oculus. I'm trying to think of the word now. I can't think. My mind just went blank. Anyways, so it kind of. It's not what the word is. An Oculus is your eye part. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know either, <laughs> um, anyways, so, you know, kind of learning that about, <clears throat> like, finding out a little more about, like, the Dumbledore history in, in, in an off way. Like, it was like, oh, Albus's sister was that. That's why that happened. Like, now we know why she died. And then, like, it just kind of sets up the history of that path, of the way the story is going to kind of unfold. And then, you know, like, it's just nerdy stuff. Like... Like the big spider in the Harry Potter films mentioned that he was the reason he was saved was that he traveled in the pocket of a man who traveled overseas. And it's like, oh, he was a Scamander, you know, find like he was with Newt, you know, like finding him. You know, it was just kind of little things like that, like made me really happy overall in the film. 
But yeah, no, I love Newt. I think he's fabulous. I think it's interesting because it's and this is where I'm gonna get my spoilers talking about earlier. I like that he has he's like on the autistic spectrum. Like you can tell. Like his personality and everything. Um, maybe like like an Asperger's kind of form in a way, because he's a, obviously a very high functioning, but you can tell like he's very focused on what he's doing at the Fantastic Beasts and his interactions with people are very small and limited and like conversation is very difficult for him and it's like you're watching it i'm like oh my gosh this is so cool that they've created this character with this kind of a personality with the, you know this this happening so it's a little different than what i think we're used to within the wizarding world and like i, I like that you know because i never... didn't even catch that like i you know that you say it it's like it made me you know i i see it now but i was just I don't know why I just didn't even see it, but it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, that would make sense because he is so socially awkward. Yeah, he doesn't make eye contact. He looks down a lot. But it's like when you start when you get him talking about his beasts and he talks about the mystical creatures, he's all yeah, he's in. all about it. He's all yeah. in. So it's very to me, it's very kind of Asperger kind of in a way. So I like that. I like seeing that. Like, it's like, wow, it's 1920s. And this guy who is a wizard has this this going on and so it's just something different that i don't think we've really seen in any of the movies or any of the stories and i had no idea until like, i'm watching him on the screen i'm like oh my god he's like on the autistic spectrum and so it was just kind of cool like i was like wow this is really refreshing as far as a character and their personality and the story and how it's all going to develop so yeah i really enjoyed that like i thought that was fabulous and yeah the fantastic beasts are fantastic the creatures visually they're awesome and like seeing them do whatever the creature does you know it's like what's his name gets bitten and then he gets sick and they're like he's like oh well one big sign is you know flames out of your anus like you're like this is why i like this world weird shit happens all the time and they don't even bat an eye about it like it just is what it is and they just move on with the rest of the day like i love that and i love kind of the quirkiness and yeah it was just cool to see creatures of literally all sizes there's literally pocket-sized creatures and there's creatures that are as big as dinosaurs in a way. And like, it just, I don't know, it, it was fun and refreshing. And I enjoyed seeing all of that. And I don't know, there's there's a lot of little things I really, really liked a lot. And then I just like all the little kind of Easter eggy things and like, like mentions for this and mentions for that and kind of dig in. But like, yeah, I really like the character of Queenie a lot. There's something there's an intelligence there that's hidden beneath it because she's probably been told to kind of subdue so much all the time. But like, you know, I think she was, she's, you know, the way a lot of women are done is, you know, well, you're really pretty. So you should work off of your looks, you know, you don't have to worry about being educated or smart. You know, you're just, you're pretty like do that. And you could tell there's more to her than just being pretty and (laughs) being able to read minds. Like she has a brain back there and she doesn't get to display it very often. But it's like you see her kind of have a few moments where she's like, no, no, I'm going to help you all get out of this trouble. Like she figures out weight. Like she's the one that gets them basically out of the building. Like she really is very smart. And you can tell like she's never really gotten to display that stuff. But then it's like the character of her sister, Tina. And it's like I thought the actress did a great job. Like I really like that actress. And I can't think of her name now because I don't have the screen up because I'm a ding dong. Catherine Waterston. Yes. <laughs> I think she did a good job as that character. But I'm just not really enjoying that character as a whole yet. Like, I definitely need to see more of her, I think. I think I didn't even start, like, kind of going, okay, I'm okay with her. Really, literally until the last scene with her of the film, where she was in it, where she was at the loading dock with him. I'm like, wow. I feel like we're finally starting to get to know her. Like, I feel like it took the whole movie to be like, I'm finally starting to see a per- piece of her personality in better light, I guess. So, I guess I'm going to need more films with her and more of her character to kind of under, like, maybe, like, start to like her. I don't dislike her. Like, I don't hate her or anything. I just not, I don't know. She's going to take, I'm going to take some time to get a little warm, fuzzy place in my heart for her, I think. It's just hard, because I think with Harry Potter, the kids just kind of nestle in, and, like, you just you love them for all their weird, quirky little reasons that each personality kind of has. Whereas this, they're, they're you know, they're full-grown adults, and they have histories, and they have you know, luggage and baggage. And so you're trying to understand them. Whereas the kids develop, you watch them develop their baggage. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. So I'm trying to think of anything else. I don't know. I feel like there was a lot in my head and I'm not, I should have written a list, but that would have been really long. But <laughs> yeah, I liked a lot of it. I loved, oh God, the fight scenes were especially like at the so end. Good. So good. 
so good so good in like the choreography and the cgi work all of it like i was like hell yeah awesome like it was yeah visually this film was great i think cgi work spectacular cgi work across the board like there was just so many awesome things to it um yeah shoot yeah and the opening sequence was you know it was was such a like I like the opening sequence because it was such a Harry Potter, David Yates opening sequence, like with the newspapers and everything and like little blips of this and the giggle juice thing popping up. And then, you know, just like you're getting little itty tiny little references of information, but they're all happening really, really fast in front of your eyes. And I was like, oh, this is what I love. Yes, yes. More of this. Like, I love that. It's very like <laughs> traditional of what he's done in the past. And it kind of keeps within the series. And I, I, I like that. I'm like, he's... He's adulting it up, but he's still keeping to like the core of the idea. So, and I think the music was good. The sound was good. I mean, the sound quality in Arthur Theater was spectacular. But <laughs> it was, it was. But the music was good. Like, I like the variation on the Harry Potter theme that they've done. <clears throat> I thought it was enjoyable. And uh, yeah, I'm just rambling now, so I'm gonna stop. Obviously, I like this film. It's clear. I'm just <laughs> all excited and happy and giggly about it. And Bobby's like probably sitting there like, oh, Michelle, just stop. <laughs> like, I just want to kill oh, myself right now. <laughs> Not at all. I'm, I, I wish I felt that way. Uh, I'm jealous. Uh, yeah, I don't really have a lot to add. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I will say to, I'll, I'll, you know, like you just mentioned, uh, James Newton Howard's score. Yeah, I, I was really impressed with it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, when it comes to everything that I enjoyed, pretty much everything you just said, uh, you know, I mean, I feel the same way. Um, I, you know, I'd mentioned when we weren't talking about spoilers, one negative I have, but it's more about the future of the franchise. Um, I, and I, before I even say this, don't get me wrong, I understand why what I wish would happen is not going to happen. I totally know that this is not how this would play out, but there's a part of me that wishes that you know, we, we know we're getting like four more movies, right? Right. Um, that they wouldn't all be necessarily tied to a Newt's Commander story, but would be more separate films with this uh, Grindelwald kind of like through line. You know, I, I liked Newt's Commander and I, I liked that character a lot. And, you know, I enjoyed this story. But at the same time, I kind of would be cool with this being it. Like, this is our glimpse at this guy who wrote this book that we know from the Harry Potter series. And this was really cool. And I, it would be nice if, you know, we moved on to the next film and it was another story in this world, you know, in the same time frame. And, you know, obviously the Grindelwald thing would be a part of it. And it would be about some some other group of characters. Maybe in America or I don't know where. So kind but. of like in a way that we say Marvel and DC have done. You get introduced to a main person and it's all part of this one solid storyline in a way, which is going to be this Grindelwald, Dumbledore kind of situation that's going to develop. And But there's other people involved in it and they're all involved with Hogwarts in a way in the wizarding world and they all kind of have yeah, their own film. Yeah, kind of, yeah. No, okay. I, I don't get me wrong, and I and I, I agree. get that why. That would be pretty cool. I wish that's how this was playing out, and sweet. I know it's not. Um, I mean, we even I we've even seen a quote this week that, you know, when it comes to the titles of these films, the, it looks like they will be like Fantastic Beast and something else is basically how they're going to now play out from here on out. Okay. And uh, and I get that from a franchise perspective that you kind of want to build a franchise and make more money this way. And if you kind of made them as separate movies, even though everyone would know it's part of this Harry Potter universe, you know, I could see the studio feeling like, oh, we well, wouldn't make as much money that way. And I know that's why it's not happening. But I kind of I wish it were playing out like that. But unfortunately, it's not. So. And I mean, honestly, that's really all I have to add. I mean, I will say about though about Johnny Depp. I, yeah, like same thing. Like like you were saying, Bobby, at the beginning of the movie, you see the back of this guy's head, the blonde hair, and I thought the same thing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's probably him. Like actually shot this, and so that was in the back of my mind. I'm like, even though we just heard about this reveal that he's being cast, like I have a feeling we're gonna see him. But though I kind of forgotten it, forgotten that as I'm watching the movie and enjoying it, and uh, when that happened. I thought it was overall, I want to say, I thought it was pretty cool that they did that at the same time. I can almost like slightly understand like the reaction that you say you heard Bobby in your theater 
because he he does kind of look a little a little I hate to use the word silly, but ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I don't know what to think yet of his his look. And yeah, no, I feel the same way. I, when I saw his, when I saw his look, I was like, there's parts of it that I really didn't like. Right. But there's parts of it that I did dig. And I think a lot of it's reflective of the twist of his personality and where his mind starts to to fracture, which is just before this story picks up. Right. And it's also like we we have seen two incarnations of this character already, right. a, a young version and a much, much older version in the Harry Potter films, mm -hmm. de the Deathly Hallow films in particular. Um, so I don't know. Then when I see this version, I'm like... I, I get that this is twenty. He's he's got a somewhat twenties look about him, a crazy twenties look. But right. uh, I don't know. There's something about it that didn't quite fit in for me. But overall, I was kind of cool with it. Uh, but I don't know. I can also kind of understand that kind of slightly like laughing reaction to yeah. his reveal. So, but yeah, when it comes to this movie, I really don't have anything else to add. Uh, in the end, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Uh, I'm looking forward to more. Uh, I will repeat what I said last week that I am still as much as I love these David Yates movies. I'm skeptical that he can keep it up and keep making Harry Potter films that I'm going to enjoy. I, I'm really worried he'll get burned out on it, but I hope he doesn't because I I've liked everything he's done. No, I agree. Like I feel like three films would have been just fine. Five does seem like a, that's it is, it is a lot. Right. Um, I will say I'm curious, especially for Bobby, because I feel like he's kind of invested a little bit in this because I'm kind of curious to see what his thoughts were on Ezra Miller in this film. I I thought that he played the role that he was given well enough. Uh, I didn't didn't particularly like the character, but I don't think you necessarily are supposed to. Right. But I thought he did fine with the uh, the role. I, I I wasn't I wouldn't say. Um, it made me any more excited to see him as Flash. I like how I've seen him as Flash and how I think he'll do in that role based on the Flash work he's put in so far. But this did nothing one way or the other All in right. terms of like, uh, I thought my it was thoughts weird. of him as I was like, Flash. Oh, he, looks, he just looks so like creepy and weird. Yeah. Like It was like so weird to see Ezra. Like, I don't know. It's just yeah. that with Flash, you could tell like he's going to have this cockiness and this certain in a way kind of because they're you know it's kind of making him like a nerd but like at the same time like he has kind of i can't think of the word now like he's kind of assertive in, in himself whereas this character was so far far from that and it was just so like wow he just looks completely different than and not that they did like anything to him like it was just his whole personality and demeanor of this character was just like wow this is really pretty stark from what i've seen so far for flash and it was just interesting to see him you know, play something kind of so different. And I'm not saying it was bad or good. It was just like, wow, it just kind of threw it through me for the first few shots of him. I was just like, what, what? That's what is it? Oh my God, look at him. Like it was just, I don't know. It threw me off. I was just curious to see if Bobby had any thoughts on that. Yeah, no, I agree with you that too. Cause, and I think that's a credit to his acting ability for yeah. sure. Because my, my only other experience with him and I feel like it's a much better, uh, kind of preview of how he'll be as flash was in perks of being a wallflower. Mm -hmm. And, he is such a different character in that compared to something right. like this and from what we've seen from Flash so far. But uh, I feel like, yeah, if you're kind of wondering what, you know, he might be like as a Flash, that, that movie's a much better gauge than something like this, which is just a completely different role. Right. But, um, yeah, I liked him in it. But, yeah. Like, now, do you know... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, though, too, that that family, I feel like, was that whole kind of storyline in that family. I loved how the whole thing was portrayed. It was borderline very frightening. I mean, that little girl walking around, I felt like at times I'm watching a horror film. Right? And She's, like, doing hopscotch <laughs> and seeing that little nursery yeah. rhyme. I was, like, freaking creepy. Uh, yeah, pretty creepy. That was definitely creepy. Like, little Salem family. Yeah. They yeah. are weird. But it's like there's other things that I like and I I know I'm just I'm keep rambling about this, but it's like John Voigt's family, the newspaper family, yeah. with the older son yeah. trying to get into politics. And it makes me question like what their role is in history because I feel like they were kind of focused in on a little bit there. You know, it was like, well, how are they going to be, you know, moving forward in the storyline? Because right. he's the newspaper right. icon guy. Right. So he or yeah. the, you know, magistrate, whatever, of newspapers in New York City. I guess he's going to be like the Hearst or something, I guess, in a way. And so you've got John Boy, and then now, you know, the younger son, 
who is like, well, now the older brother who is ruling the roost is out the picture. Like, what's he going to do? Like, he has a weird, like, vibe going. And I'm like, it'll be interesting to see how they interject them if they do in future movies. And I feel like they will because they were focused in on it at points. And it was interesting to kind of see that play up. So I was kind of like, well, that's and kind that's- of a cool key up for the next one maybe or two, you know. And not just that, but John Boyd's a big actor. Like, yeah. I don't really feel like he would take that role just for, like, you right. know, the, what, 30 lines that he had? Like, <laughs> exactly. I'm not trying to say, you know, downplay it, but it's like every time that he shows up and, like, I've seen him and stuff, it's like, whether it's big or small, it's like, I don't really see him doing something that minuscule and then just kind of moving on. I feel like that's going to be a reoccurring role and he's going to be a player, bigger role in the in the future. Right. Now, Adding on to that, I have a question. Like maybe I, maybe you know this. I don't know this, but do you think we'll see a a younger Dumbledore? Oh, that's since happening. The history, you know, since the history, do you think that you know they'll visit that and you know they'll have some sort of interaction and bring him into the story? Yeah, I, I, they, I, they, they almost have to, and I know, and I'm curious to see how many different versions of a young Albus they're going to have because I feel like they could easily do flashbacks of him and his brother. That also starts with the A letter that I can't think of now. Aberforth. Aberforth. And then Grindelwald and then um, Dumbledore's younger sister. And like I feel like there's going to be flashbacks of the four of them when they were young. And I feel like there'll be some interesting things of just before Grindelwald starts to fracture and go off in his own little crazy land um, with him and Dumbledore. And then later with him and Dumbledore. Like, so I feel like there's going to be, not only will there be a version of Dumbledore, I think there's going to be multiple versions of Dumbledore at different ages throughout the next four films um and right, so that without, i think that'll be a flashback then do you think we'll have one that's not a flashback like he'll actually come and we'll get to see dumbledore more at, at current time yeah i think there's also gonna be you know uh, could there it, i don't know how they're gonna develop the story obviously i'm literally this is all me speculating but obviously at some point grindelwald and albus dumbledore are gonna have a head off and so at some point yeah it's going to be in current time of the films where it'll be albus of albus's middle age i guess is the best way to put that because we all know he's older than dirt but <laughs> it's <laughs> so he's going to be what like a hundred and five at some point i'm sure and that'll be basically midway in his life because he's 200 years old when he dies right no i don't remember I don't know. yeah like I don't he's know crazy old like he lived forever <laughs> so i feel like it'll be an interesting way to kind of see him but it's like uh, there's also part of me that wants to see kind of younger versions of other people like like who doesn't want to see you know like a young minerva professor uh i can't think of minerva's last name maggie smith's character yeah the head of anyways so oh uh, like, yeah it's like I, I look forward McGonagall. to McGonagall, <laughs> Professor McGonagall, thank you. And so it's like I think it'd be kinda cool to like see a young, like hot Professor Minerva McGonagall before she you know, like as she's like starting out her career or something and she winds up helping Albus do something. Like I think it'd be kinda really fun. They could really kinda pull in other characters from the Harry Potter fil- series and um and interject them in the storyline. But yeah, I think we're definitely gonna see Albus in current time Albus and then also past Albus. And then we'll definitely, you know, I think it's just going to be a lot of, we're going to see things it's like they did with Harry Potter. Like there were flashbacks in certain time periods to give you the backstory. So you understand what's going on. I think you're going to get more in depth of that. Not like a, like whole flashbacks, but you're going to get bits and pieces here and there. I'm sure interjected throughout the storyline for the next few films, which will be interesting. And I'm way looking forward to see more of these fantastic creatures. <laughs> like how many more, like, I, I know people that have the textbook on their shelves in their homes. And so I'm like, I'm cu- and I've never looked at it. So I'm curious to see how many creatures are going to be developed in the future movies. Like how many different like things that they can do or can't do, or, you know, like how they're just going to look or act or like, are they good? Like, are they poisonous? Or are they not like, you know, like different things. Like I like learning kind of weird stuff like that. Like it's kind of cool. And I think it'll be fun to see more and more develop as the films, the films, films kind of almost kind of kind of go on. So that's kind of fun. Cool. Uh, well, I think with that, I think we've we've covered Fantastic Beasts. But uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'd be curious to know what listeners think of the sh- of the film. So yeah, anybody listening, I'd love I'd love to know what everyone thinks. I mean, it's got a pretty good score on Tomatoes right now. It's in the seventy something range. I forget what it's at right at this moment. It's got an eight on IMDb. I can see right now. Yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, I think with that, uh, we can wrap up um, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them and move on. Um, I'll, I know, I can say right now, this show is definitely going to go on a bit long. We still have plenty to talk about. Um, real quick, you guys all talked about Arrival last week. Yes, <laughs> I've been waiting for this all week. Uh, I had planned to also see it and it just didn't work out, but I did see it this week. I saw it Tuesday night. Um, Michelle's been super antsy. To hear. I, I, David has I not have, mentioned anything about like he's like he's like I saw it. And I'm like you saw it? What do you like? And, and I've heard nothing. So I've been literally waiting for this moment to find out what he thinks. I about really, I film. really had no reason to keep it from you except that I'm like, hey, why not? Just, just to torture me. You. You've literally just done it uh, just to torture me because <laughs> I enjoyed because, this film so much. To recap, yeah, if you, if anyone listening didn't listen to the last episode, uh, you enjoyed the film quite a bit. Yo, uh, it's in my top 10. That's happening um, this year. Yeah, yeah you, you were very, very happy with the rival. Bobby, you were too. Uh, you seemed oh, yeah. pretty very impressed with so. it. Yasha, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you seemed like you enjoyed it, but just not definitely not as much. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's accurate. Okay. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like, oh, man, this movie is amazing. But they, my opinion had swayed and differed once I heard um, everybody's review and kind of looked at it in a different light. So right. I liked it, but it wasn't. It's not. It's probably not going to make my show <clears throat> Gotcha. My soapbox works. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so I finally get to tell you, Michelle. <laughs> been waiting a week. Dying. Uh, yeah, I saw it Tuesday night. Um, I was surprised uh, for a Tuesday night showing how busy the theater was. It was, I mean, there's not a lot of showings of Arrival to choose from, even though it's very critically well received. It's definitely, you know, I look at showtimes around here anyway, and it's like, eh, one theater, a couple showtimes. It's not a lot. Um, so maybe that's why, but yeah, I was surprised how busy it was on a Tuesday night of all, of all nights, uh, arrival. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to draw this out as much as I can. Um, <laughs> Damn it. uh, this is a movie that, you know, I feel like it's easy to make a film like this and draw you in with the mystery. But then in the end, uh, it's, you know, the payoff is never as good good as you hope you know what i mean like it's so mysterious and you're wondering man how's this going to play out you always build it up in your mind more than it's really is and then you finally see the aliens you're like okay whatever it was so mysterious before but now i've seen them okay it's not that big a deal and um with that said this movie definitely pulls it off insanely well uh i enjoyed the film quite a bit um, I was I was very very impressed with it because I was really worried about that. I was really worried, especially even as I was watching it and enjoying the first part of it, that I was like, you know what, this is great, but this is just not going to be a great ending, and, and it really was. Uh, yeah, I I liked the movie a lot. Um, there, this is definitely a film too. Someone like me who maybe pays a little too much to attention to scores, you can't ignore the score in this film. Um, the score by Johan Johansson uh, is a major player in the film, and uh, he, he did an incredibly good job. He used I know theater of voices to uh, to do the score, and it's it's incredibly good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I I was very surprised by how much I liked it. And like I said, even while I was watching it, there was a part of me. A, there was a point where I was getting a little worried. I'm like, I don't know. I have a feeling this is. Even maybe in an hour, I'm, it's going to end, and it's just not going to do it for me. But it, it definitely did. Uh, I maybe had one negative in it, but I don't even know if it's a negative. It, I'm going to more, and I'm going to do this without talking spoilers, trust me. Um, I, I think I'm more just going to talk this out as I'm trying to figure it out, because I don't know. I, I definitely need to see the movie again. I will say there's one creative choice in the film that I I can't decide if because it, it seems slightly jarring and i i don't know yet if i like it or not and i'm not going to talk about it i'm not going to mention it here it's not really a spoiler but kind of i just don't want to talk about the movie um but i don't know i feel like i'll watch it again and then i'll be way more accepting but at the time i i remember thinking why is this happening right now <laughs> I'm super excited to talk to you when you're done with this. Uh, I'm I'm curious to see what you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about, but yeah. I don't know what to make of that one creative choice. Otherwise. Was it like midway through? It was was about right in the middle of the movie. And it was the Uh, Jeremy Renner thing? Yes. Okay. And, um, but other than that, I I was very, very, very impressed with, with the rifles. Quite good. If you haven't seen it, I mean, 
you guys have already gushed about it last week. And I, I am continuing to gush about it. You should go see Arrival. It I, is not just another alien, you know, uh, aliens come to Earth and what happens kind of movie. This is, I mean, that is what this is, but it's, this is unique. It's quite good. I highly recommend it. Uh, Bobby, you also saw another movie this week. Yeah, actually, um, did you, well, to get into the other aspect, did you want to jump into box office or do you want me to go and tell you what I saw? Yeah, go ahead and tell, you, tell us what you saw. What'd you see, All Bobby? Right. All right, well, one thing I saw, I forgot, I actually didn't write it down, but I got a chance to finally see Ouija, Origin of Evil. Um, oh. <laughs> it was written and directed by Mike Flanagan. And there was there was a one movie that came out a, a couple of years ago, maybe not even a couple of years ago, but there was the other Ouija movie that in this movie, I don't, as far as I know, because I didn't see that other one, but as far as I know, this one doesn't have any connection to it other than it's still the board game. And this one is, is set like in 1965 in, in LA. And it's about this mom who has her two daughters that she's raising. And they are basically pulling scams on people who come in and they'll do a seance, but they, they recreated things to make these people think that the, the dead is within the, within the room. And Eventually, uh, the one older daughter brings home the, the Ouija board and the younger daughter starts playing with it and ends up getting possessed. And an evil entity enters her body and starts to wreak havoc throughout the house. And I have to say, this actually was pretty good. I, I was really surprised at um, how well the scares were. Uh, there's definitely some pretty decent jump scares. And it, overall, it was pretty creepy, especially when you have – it's always kind of creepy when you have little kids possessed and, mm. and, and seeing them do different things. And they played that to a T. And so it just was actually a pretty a pretty decent scary movie for once. And I mean, not that there hasn't been because there actually has been some pretty decent scary movies this year. But um, I was surprised from this lineage, from the prior film, that right. this would be good and, and it actually turned out to be pretty decent. That's surprising. It, just it, looked, was it looked like the trailers looked so cheesy. You know, and that's funny. I don't know if you were oh. here when Bobby and I, I think you weren't actually on the episode when I gave my opinion on the trailer. Cause I, I remember thinking that Bobby and I actually agreed that I actually found the trailer interesting. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I definitely wasn't here. <laughs> um, I, I thought when I saw the trailer that I'm like, I feel like, I mean, it definitely could go either way, but I feel like there's promise there. Like it actually could be a, a definitely a better Ouija film than that first film that I actually never saw, but I never heard anything good about. No, that look was looked terrific. Um, so I don't know. I, I was actually slightly interested in it when I saw the trailer. So now, so this week I'm going to try to squeeze in before the Thanksgiving holiday that's happening that is upon us all because this year apparently decides to like speed up like the speed of light. Um, I'm going to try to wedge in Edge of 17 between now and Thursday. Are you going to try to squeeze in Ouija based off of what Bobby just said? Because you like scary movies a lot. Uh, no, I mean, there's, I've got a mini, no, f- no offense to it. I, I will probably see it, but I won't see it in the theater. Oh. Uh, I'm just curious. But no, I mean, I could definitely, I will rent it and watch it eventually, but there's too many other things to see right, right. now. Nocturnal animals coming out oh, and, right. and Edge of 17. And yeah, no, as much as, you know, I value Bobby's opinion that Ouija is a good movie. I, I, I've got other things no, I'll yeah, watch I first <laughs> to answer your question. I'm just curious. Um, yeah. And I would say the same. I would yeah. definitely say it's solid, but you could absolutely wait for it to come out on blu-ray or right, right. netflix or whatever and and i think you'll really enjoy it in that atmosphere as well I, I think it's it's definitely worth watching out of some of the horror movies that have come out within the last few years and there's been some good ones and i would put this in the realm of being pretty solid sweet but you also um, saw the edge of 17 i oh, did. did matter of fact i did oh. matter of fact i saw two movies that were about coming of age stories and this was one of them um and as you guys have mentioned this is something that people have been talking about for a little while and it stars Haley steinfeld and um woody harrelson and kira sedgwick is also in it and it's written and directed by kelly freeman craig 
and it's if anyone doesn't know, it's the story about a junior high school girl who's entering into that phase of her life where everything is really awkward, but yet this this female, this girl, she has been awkward all her life since she's a, since she's been like a little kid, and the only person that she really had as a friend was her this other girl that she meets when she's really young. So they become childhood friends up and through junior high school. And then uh, one day where her, her best friend ends up sleeping with her brother, uh, everything changes. Cause now this one girl who had this sort of ride or die girl that was through thick and thin through everything with her, it changes the dynamic of their relationship because all of a sudden she's with her brother and it's her navigating through her life and, and trying to figure out really essentially, I mean, it's kind of like if you already know you're different and have a hard time trying to fit in, there's that aspect of you trying to maintain your individuality while still trying to fit in and, or having that need to fit in. And, and it really explores that. And I thought the best part of this movie actually is the relationship between Woody Harrelson's character as the teacher and, and Nadine, the character that Haley Steinfeld plays. It's really, really well done. It's very funny. The the two of them going bantering back and forth is just superb stuff. And I just also have a respect for the film in a way that it really gives you a window into this young girl's life. And it, it has this John Hughes sensibility to it. And it never really feels like it's it's uh, it's being preachy or talking down to you. It, it kind of just gives you this aspect of her going through life and trying to maintain her own self while still knowing that she needs to kind of um, navigate the world in a way that makes sense that she can still be a part of society even though she is snarky about society. So it's it's everything that you would kind of like in a character that has that um, sort of be against the world mentality. And I think Haley really pulls it off in a, in a really cool way. In fact, as I was watching this movie, I kept thinking about Joss Whedon, <laughs> which is, sounds funny, really? but yeah, because I know Joss Whedon's favorite character, uh, superhero character, is Kitty Pride, and as I was watching her, I was like, "Man, she'd make a really good Kitty Pride." And Joss Whedon should direct that movie, <laughs> and I'd watch the hell out. Of it. Yeah, I could see and that. So, yeah, so I was like, "Man, that would be pretty awesome." But yeah, so I was ke- getting that vibe from her. But overall, I really, really liked it, and I suspect that most people will too if they go go check it out. At first, I had a hard time, honestly, getting into the flow of it because it's about this 17-year-old girl or this 16, 17-year-old girl. So, like, well, how am I relating to this movie in any sort of way? Because it really kind of speaks to that demographic and and or at least a female demographic and then to the add on to the top of that an aspect of a person that feels like an outsider. So, it was kind of like hard at first, but then eventually you kind of get into the flow of it and everything starts to coalesce and and really becomes a pretty strong statement. And I thought it was really good. You said you saw something else as well? or ah, Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Thank you very much, David. Um, so the other movie <laughs> was a, another coming of age movie. And it's actually it's something I had been hearing about. Maybe within the last month, it has been getting a little bit of buzz, and I decided to check it out. And it's a movie called Moonlight, and I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but mm-hmm. it's about this young African American boy, and it takes place in three time periods. It shows him as a young adolescent, um, in his mid teens, and also as a young adult. And the kid's name is Chiron, and his story is that he is from a young age knows that he's different, but he doesn't quite know why. And he ends up discovering at a very young age that he likes other boys. And so he has this self discovery of trying to figure out how he's supposed to deal with this in a world where one, he lives in a poor area and neighborhood that takes place in Miami. And so he's trying to, one, trying to feel like 
he he belongs, even though he knows that there's something different about him. But two, in I just to get kind of um I don't know, uh, a little bit deeper into it. It's it's hard enough, obviously, being gay in any kind of society, any kind of world. But when you're gay and you're in a black community, it can be so much worse because it's just it's 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 just rough. And so they really go to lengths to show you that. And his mom is no help because she's like a crack addict. And so he doesn't barely want to go home. But there is one sort of shining light in his life that is uh, a, a, a guy who he kind of looks up to, played by Marshala Ali, who you might know as being Cottonmouth and Luke Cage, and his, uh, and his girlfriend, played by Janelle Monet. They kind of take this kid in on when he kind of comes home from school and give him that safe place in a, in a, in a situation that's filled with no judgment and, and very fostering towards him. So you see this kid throughout the years and it's, it's structured in a three act structure. So in the beginning structure of the first act, he's a kid. And then in the second one, he's a teenager in high school dealing with these situations. And then in the third act, he's a full grown adult. And I thought it was really, really well done. And it was just, it just had this voice to it that again, makes you feel like you're a part of this kid's life as he goes through the through these different stages and seeing the, the amount of stuff that he has to deal with and being able to empathize with his character because of how hard and difficult his life's being when you just don't know how to express anything in, your, in that situation when everyone around you is telling you it's not a good look. So it was just... Really, really well done, and um, it was done by, uh, written and directed by Barry Jenkins, and he just did an excellent job with it. Uh, I haven't seen anything else of his work, but I thought he did a fantastic job with this. And if you're looking for something on the independent kind of level, a little bit of a quieter movie, this would definitely be something you should check out. Very cool. And one more. What? <laughs> Got this. <laughs> yeah, one more movie. Um had a chance to see uh, Mel Gibson's Hacksaw Ridge, starring Andrew Garfield, uh, Teresa Palmer, and Hugo Weaving, and um, let's see, I think uh, Sam Worthington and Vince Vaughn. Man, this movie, oh, it was so good. I I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, the s- background of the story is that Andrew Garfield is playing this character called Desmond Dawes, who enlists in the army and he wants to be a medic. So he ends up getting into um, this regimen and this unit where he essentially is not going to use a weapon. He's just going to be a medic and try and do his part that way. And you see this guy's life. And, and by the way, it, it's a biopic or of sorts. And, and it's about a guy who really was this person. So immediately, you know, that's right up my alley. But um, it was just so well done. The, 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 the fight scenes, if you call it that, the battle scenes were so brutal. Um, Mel Gibson didn't shy away from shooting it. I don't even know how he shot it because it's so – it's like – when you watch Saving Private Ryan in the beginning, it's like that on steroids in a way. And it's just intense. And um, it, it's, it, it goes on for quite some time, and it, it's brutal. But I just really enjoyed this story. I thought Andrew Garfield was just magnetic in this role. And as good as he was and as good as all the cast was, in fact, Vince Vaughn did a really great job in this. I thought his character was... Uh, he was sort of like the drill sergeant kind of guy, but he had a, a bit of um, comedy to his 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 uh, his part to where he's putting down these other privates and putting them down in a humorous manner. And it just it almost stole the show in terms of his his part in it. But who really, really shined to me in this movie as much as everyone else did was Hugo Weaving, who played the father of uh, Desmond Dawes, of Andrew Garfield's character. He puts in such a performance in this movie that was just in, insanely good. 
And I can't speak highly enough about the movie. I thought it was just excellent. And I was really, really happy with it coming out of it. And uh, definitely at this point, feel like it's going to be somewhere in my top 10. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, it's I'm, been wow. it's been well received critically. Uh, I, I mean, I'll repeat. I mean, I would see it based on your opinion on it, but based on the marketing, I I would never get behind that movie personally. Like, I just thought it looked bad. And uh, if it if it's as good as you're saying it is, I I gotta ask like who the fuck was in charge of marketing this? Because to <laughs> me, it, it it didn't look good at all. The trailer yeah. looked silly. It almost looked like a mock you trailer of a film it almost looked like a movie that you would have seen in tropic thunder yeah a, a, a mock you trailer <laughs> you know, like it's completely that's, that's honestly how i felt about the trailer when i saw it yes um yeah but i mean you know you, you're gushing about it and i mean yeah it's got an 85 percent on rotten tomatoes right now it's it's being very well received like but yeah, that was def. That was just my honest reaction to seeing that trailer. Like, it just did not look good to me. No. Mm. Uh, I thought intense. I thought it looked good. I thought I mean I've seen the trailer and I thought it looked good. I thought it looked interesting. I thought that it wouldn't get any attention because Mel Gibson is a social pariah when it comes mm. to Hollywood. It's so then, then hard. There's that. Yeah, for people to just be like, "Hey, let's go watch a Mel Gibson movie," whether he's the director or not, because it's like. You know, they say from the director of this, from the director of that, it's not like they're flashing his name like they used to back in the day. Right. So they're actively yeah. trying to, how do you promote a movie that's amazing by a director that nobody wants, that nobody really wants to work with or talk about anymore because he's lost his damn mind? Right. All right. Yeah. No, it's, it's, um, yeah, I would suggest you guys getting a chance to see it to make up your mind for yourself. Cool. It's definitely, um, I mean, if that's the way you were thinking of it, as you saw the trailer, if you see the actual movie, I would be shocked if you thought that way coming out of it. It's it's intense. I mean, yeah, I will go out of my way to see it now just because I want to know now what I what I think of it. Like, I mean, will I see it in the theater? Most likely not. But I'll definitely watch it now just because I, I want to know if it is what I saw in the trailer compared to what you're saying. You know, I, I have to know now. Before right. I didn't really care as much, but but now I'll definitely I'll definitely see it. Hmm. Um, yeah, you mentioned box office numbers. We'll talk about that really quick. Uh, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them? Of course, number one. But where at number one? Like, how much money did it really surprise, make? Surprise! Surprise! Um, it was tracking, I believe, between seventy and eighty, and it right there in the middle, seventy-five million. <laughs> um, of course. Uh, so yeah, that's that's where it uh, debuted. Uh, Doctor Strange in its third week in release was at number two with uh, seventeen point seven. Trolls at number three with seventeen point five, and Arri wow. Arri Arrival at number four with eleven point eight, and Almost Christmas at number five with uh, about seven million. Trolls is holding on, dude. Man, kids movies, man, <laughs> kids movies, dude. Mm -hmm. Dang. Um, Age of, uh, the Edge of Seventeen that you had talked about earlier was an, also a new release that came in and down at number seven, just below Hacksaw Ridge. And uh, another new release, Bleed for This, was at number eight. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But that's is Bleed for This out out or is it in limited? I mean, it's not super wide, but that uh, fifteen hundred theaters. That's it's not mm. very limited. But uh, yeah, that's our box office numbers. I, I fully expected Fantastic Beasts to be higher. I mean, don't get me wrong, seventy-five million is a great amount of money for an right. opening weekend. But I was surprised to see it below Doctor Strange. I did not expect that. We had talked about this midweek off air, and we had all made predictions. And I was up there at ninety-five. Uh, you know, I, I there's no doubt the tracking. Sometimes, even if the tracking seems odd, there's no doubt. A lot of times, the tracking is wrong, but. I would say most of the time it's it's right there. Right. So I mean, if it hadn't been for the tracking, I would have probably gone into the hundreds. Like, but yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised it's only seventy five. I'm I'm curious. I feel like it came out a week too early. If that makes any sense, I feel like it yeah. should have come out this Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving. Right. And I feel like it would, and I still feel like this weekend's going to do spectacularly well. Don't get me wrong. Thanksgiving weekend is a huge huge cash cow for the movie industry and uh this weekend will be no exception to that 
but I feel like it might have just come out literally just a few days before it should have because I feel like if it came out on Thanksgiving weekend, it would have done gangbusters. Gangbusters. Even if it came out on Friday, the day after, it still would, I think it would have done 90 easily. And I say that because, yeah, I mean, like, the Potter films, the last one, opening weekend debut and again and i realize that it was the end of the entire series and i I will preface this by saying i realize it was the finale of that entire section of the franchise um but its opening weekend was 167 so i was like and and i know how huge the harry potter fandom is especially you know like it's 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 worldwide it's global it's insane and like americans eat it up with a spoon we love it and so I assumed, yeah, I was in the high 90s. I was like, man, like I feel confident enough to say high, high 90s. And possibly I was being really optimistic and thinking it could even break 100. But clearly I was way off. But I also still kind of feel like it, it came out a few days too early, too. So that's just my opinion. Yeah. My humble opinion. I mean, there's something to be said about as big as this world is. It's In the end, it's not a Harry Potter film. Right. And, and I knew that. Uh, yeah. You know, as crazy as you would, it seems, because you would think all, you know, if people love the Harry Potter films so much that they were, you know, giving them opening weekends like that, that this would be close to that. But yeah, not, nope, not so much. Yeah, surprising. Um, we're going on long. And honestly, at this point, I would normally s- just skip uh, trailers, but there's two trailers I, I have to talk about. And uh, so I want to do that really quick. King Kong, Skull Island, had a trailer drop this week. Um, you know, we had seen stuff for this at Comic-Con in Hall H. And then this trailer comes out. And I'm curious to know what you guys thought. Uh, you know, uh, especially you, Bobby, and Yasha, because you were in Hall H as well. Um, because, I, I don't know, I watched this trailer and I'm like, this seems like a very different movie from what I thought we were getting. Like, even from what I remember seeing when I w- was there in San Diego. Uh but I got to say, I don't necessarily say that's a bad thing. Like, it seems it's got a different vibe than I, I was, you know, expecting. But part of me really, really digs it. Uh, I mean, I think it, it can all, my feeling about it all comes down to this one shot they show in the trailer of this. I, I guess he's probably, you know, some soldier on a helicopter. And you see the reflection in his sunglasses as he's smiling of this explosion. And it's so ridiculous looking and kind of so 70s. And it's so like, kind of awesome <laughs> i really kind of okay, i kind of dig it so i but in the end i part of me the first time i watched this trailer i was like i don't know what to think of this but i don't know i'm kind of i'm kind of into it now so i don't know uh bobby what do you think of it oh, i liked it a lot um you know it's funny because i hadn't really thought too much about the trailer when we had saw it back in hall h i remember liking what we had been shown at right. back in hall h but uh, at this point, I can only remember bits and pieces of what they did show us uh, at that time. And I do feel like it retained some of that. But then now it does seem like there's uh, something of, I wouldn't say a complete shift, but there it does feel like it's shifted somewhat in ter- terms of what I, as, in terms of what I'm seeing now. Because now it seems as though, and I actually kind of like this direction, but now it seems as though maybe you spend first part of the movie, with Kong as the antagonist and then maybe after that he becomes sort of an ally as a in, in, in terms of fighting these other creatures that are on the island and I kind of like that idea because it makes you I feel like it, it, I, I feel like that gives it as a better setup to a King Kong versus Godzilla as opposed to him just being this threat the entire movie and it's something that they're just trying to kill and get rid of so I think it makes it it gives you the the advantage or the viewpoint that maybe he's going to be the good in the the good thing in the Godzilla and King Kong movie and Godzilla would be the bad guy or whatever. I'm more of a Godzilla person personally, but um I can see what them trying to do in this and and having it as a setup to that movie. And I like the look of the like you said that 70s vibe that you get from this trailer. And I just think that it's going to be a good action film that we maybe didn't quite get within the Peter Jackson Jackson version, which had shades of that. But I think this seems like this will deliver on it in a better way. Right. Yasha, your thoughts? You know, I it looks okay. 
I mean, it looks campy. It looks cheesy to me. Um, I've never really been a huge Kong fan. Um, actually, monster fan in general. Uh, Godzilla or King Kong. Um, it did catch my interest a little bit. Um, but I'm, you know, I, I'm indifferent. I'm not completely sold on it just yet. I mean, it looks just okay. Like, I don't think it's going to be that great. I think it's going to be a letdown. Uh, Michelle, you did you see this? Yeah, I, I think it looks cheesy as hell, which is a shame because I feel like the teaser trailers we're getting, I felt had a completely different vibe. And I was kind of like, oh, this is going to be kind of like, it felt much more, I guess, dramatic and serious and still with action, but just, I guess, more dramatic. And this just looks like an action film with King Kong thrown into it. And it just looks kind of cheesy. Yeah. But at the same time, and I say this, it could be kind of fun. So, I don't know, but the trailer looks cheesy as hell to me. And yeah, going opinion. Through, you know, my, when I, for me going into this, like, I, even when they first announced this at Comic-Con, what, at 2014, I remember thinking, okay, they're making a King Kong, like, Another origin Kong. movie. I, I really don't care. I, I'm not really a King Kong guy either. And uh, so, uh, to me, if this had been a more serious, you know, looking film, I probably would have felt like, well, it's another Peter Jackson Kong, and I don't want to see yeah. that again. So to see this, even though I'm kind of still kind of surprised by it compared to the vibe I got, you know, just a few months ago, but uh, I don't know. I, I feel like this is different enough that I'm like, okay, I'll definitely see this, and I, I have high hopes. I mean, it, it could suck, but hopefully it doesn't. I th- it could be a lot of fun, and it d- it doesn't look like it's going to be that same. Like, oh, let's just make another serious King Kong film. Uh, I don't want to see that for sure. So at least this seems different. I'm, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Um, the other trailer I really want to talk about, of course, is uh, Beauty and the Beast. We got our first trailer for that this week. Um, Mich- I'll be I'll be taking my earbuds yeah, out. <laughs> Michelle, you are still refusing to see I'm, it. I'm taking my headphones off. I'm not listening. Wait, you're not even gonna listen to our opinion. No, I'm literally not even gonna listen to yours as opinion. Come wow. on. No, seriously. No, now now that's re- that's insane. No, it's not. <laughs> you're not gonna listen to our opinion on the trailer. Are you no. serious right now? <laughs> is a joke right no I'm seriously I don't, I, don't, I don't know I'm serious I don't we want to know what you guys think uh, Man, you, you took it to a whole new level <laughs> yep Michelle here's my crown yeah, yeah. dude Bobby's losing yeah it. you ship that thing right over buddy <laughs> and you're gonna have that crown forever <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's no sure. way anybody's gonna top this yeah <laughs> Bobby's losing it. It's killing me. Uh, no, I don't. I know that sounds really crazy, but it's like not only do I not want to see the trailer and I haven't seen any of the imagery, which is really awesome. Oh, it's getting harder because I feel like I'll start to see like the pop of Emma Emma's head like start in my like <laughs> my Facebook feed and I'm just like, no, no, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, don't look, you know, like I'll move past it really fast. So it's like I'm still trying not to look at imagery or or anything or really hear any of the music or the score from the trailer i'm really trying to keep it as fresh as i can all right uh well so yeah at that yeah she she's Mouth. taking her earbuds out <laughs> uh anyway um beauty and the beast uh bobby what you what do you think of this well again it, coming back to where i started from before with this I've seen the animated film, but I haven't seen it multiple times enough to have every detail of it down in my head. So for me, uh, seeing this just made me really want to see this movie in a live action version. I can understand if people who have seen the animated version are analyzing it to a level that I'm not. But from what I see, this looks like something right up my alley for what Disney has been doing with their live action conversions. Um, I, I'm not taking it to the point where I'm being hypercritical and I can understand that there's certain things that even if you're not necessarily a fan of the, the animated films where you can ding it for in terms of the way the look of the beast is and whatnot. But for me so far, everything is working pretty well and it's just making me look more and more forward to this movie coming out 
and seeing the finished product because it just looks and feels like it's going to be another hit on the on the level of like what we got with the jungle book and i really enjoyed that movie as well so uh, it's just making me more anticipated or looking more anticipated for this film uh yasha your thoughts i'm excited i i'm looking forward to seeing it i i mean they're just redoing the movie the animated feature. So if they stay true to that, it looks like it could be a lot of fun. Um, I think I'm looking forward to it. What can I say? Like, I mean, I really like the first one. It's one of my, probably one of my favorite Disney movies. So the animated feature, I should say. So I'm looking forward to it. I will definitely watch it. And I'm, you know, I'm ready. You know, I think the special effects look fantastic. The storyline looks, you know, true to form and hopefully it's just as good as it looks. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. I've said before that the animated version is uh, one of my favorite Disney uh, feature animated films, if not my favorite. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this looks about as I expected. It, it looks uh, very good. Uh, I did uh, voice uh, one uh, thing I'm a little skeptical of off air with you guys. Um, I think the beast looks great. Uh, there's a couple of times in this trailer and I've watched it multiple times at this point that I feel like, uh, and it depends on the shot that his, his face looks a little too like animated for me. It, it looks like not quite as good as I was hoping, but for the most part, then there's other shots. He looks fine. And maybe when I see the final product, when the movie comes out, you know, all these are things that maybe they're just still being worked on. Who knows? But uh, that's the only thing that kind of worries me a little bit. But other than that, I, I think it looks quite good. I'm excited for it. And uh, we get that in the spring, don't we? Uh, yeah, I think. I want to say, yeah. Yeah, March. I, just, I think it's March. I don't have the date right in front of me. Matter but. of fact, I think I heard someone say it's um, St. Patrick's Day weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's around what, 17th, 18th? Somewhere around there. Yeah. Right? 17th. But uh, yeah, that'll be uh, that'll do it for trailers this week. Um, before we move on to our one cool thing segment, um, there's one bit of news I wanted to talk about a little more in depth because yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Inhumans is we've talked about Inhumans before. I've I've talked about how excited I was to see a movie of Inhumans in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Being it's one of the few Marvel comics more recently I've actually read a few of, and I, I like that world quite a bit. Um, and then Inhumans seemed like it was being pulled from the schedule, and Feige wasn't necessarily saying it was never going to happen. And then we get word this week that an Inhumans TV series is coming on ABC, and not only that, but the first, and please correct me if I'm getting any of these details wrong, the first two episodes will premiere also in IMAX. And they are being filmed with IMAX cameras. And uh, yeah, that, so this is happening as an ABC series. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to think of this. I'm not happy. I'm not happy because I wanted to see an actual feature film. And sure, the argument could be made, well, you're kind of, you're getting two episodes on the big screen, but that's, it's not, it's going to be an ABC television show production quality and nothing against ABC and their television shows, but uh, it's just not the same. And even if they are shooting it with IMAX cameras, this is still something that's just getting announced and it's apparently coming out next fall. So it's not like it's going to get the production quality that a feature film would get. It's just not. And, uh, I, so I, I don't know. I'm really, I'm really bummed. I wanted, I think this storyline to get, uh, a little bit, a better version than I, I think we're going to get. So I don't know what, what, I don't know what to make of it. I'm right there with you. Like, I agree. Like I'm not happy about it and I feel to invest IMAX quality filming in a TV show is kind of crazy. And, and uh, let, me rephrase, let me rephrase that. If they were to do that for like Game of Thrones, I'd be all in. But <laughs> I, I feel like if they're going to do IMAX quality investment in this layout, why not just do a film? Like, it, But at the same time, like I just, yeah, as an ABC show, I'm not feeling it. As a show as a whole, I'm not feeling it. I'm 
Yeah, I'm not happy. I don't like it. I think. Mm, and I should be clear yeah. too that because someone might be listening and thinking, wait a second, David. Like you've said many times that a lot of these franchises and properties, you would prefer to see them in a television show format. And I stand by that. And if this were a Netflix show, if this were an HBO show or a Showtime show. I would be singing a different tune, but it's not. It's an ABC show. And uh, yeah, that's the part more so that I'm not a fan of. Like, But I also think it would be better as a film as a whole. I just feel like drawing it into a series. I feel like and, I, and, and I'm not watching S.H.I.E.L.D. right now. So Bobby's going to jump to S.H.I.E.L.D.'s defense. But like, I feel like it's a rabbit hole that writing wise, you're never going to crawl out of. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I would be all for a television show just because you're going to be able to dig deeper into the characters than you're not going to be able to do when you only get a couple hours. Mm. Um, but again, it, it's more so that it's an ABC um, show for me. Um, I don't like either idea. Bobby, your thought? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll counterpoint a little bit. To me, the where I do agree with you, David, is that... I, I had wished that it was a film because it was first announced as a film. Yeah. And so that's where my heart was with it and what I was thinking that we were going to get. But where I'm more hopeful than I think you guys are is that knowing that, one, it's going to be a co-finance project between IMAX, ABC, Marvel, and uh, Disney, that I'm hopeful the budget it will allow for it to be better quality than just regular TV quality. So them filming it with the IMAX cameras and showing the first two episodes in theaters as though it's a two hour film. I I'm hoping that we're getting that kind of level. And what also help helps me or hope makes me hope that as well is the fact that it's only eight episodes. So I feel like maybe they can um, add more to per episode budget <laughs> if it's only eight episodes as opposed to 13 or 20 or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of where at least, at least my hopes are, are lying within the, the series and the fact that it's on ABC. And the, the other aspect is what um, still makes me like the fact that it's going this way is that it's, if everything is to be believed, it will still center around the Royal family, which is, Black Bolt, Medusa, Cor Cormac, and uh, Gorgon, and I'm forgetting someone, Lockjaw, and someone else who I'm forgetting. But it's the, the Inhumans that most people know from the comics as opposed to the ones that are on S.H.I.E.L.D. So that is some stories that I, I want to see with characters I want to see, and especially if they do it like in the comics with them in their home base being on the dark side of the moon. So... I think, uh, I think um, the the part that is worrying is that it's ABC, but with everything else involved, with all these other people involved pouring in money, I feel like it, we might be getting something better than the normal fare that we get on ABC. Because really, if you think about it, ABC doesn't have that must-see TV tune-in show. And from all from everything that I've heard in terms of what the show is being pitched as for this uh, for this um, version of the Inhumans, the royal family, is that it would be in the style of a Game of Thrones, and and that that's why they kind of wanted to go TV, didn't have it in a long form because when you have the the brother of um, Black Bolt, which is Maximus, who constantly is plotting against his brother to overthrow him for the throne it, it can lend itself to that kind of storytelling that you get in game of thrones so all those things combined the fact that it's eight episodes the fact that imax is involved and everyone's spending the, the money on it i have hopes that it's going to elevate itself beyond the fact that where it's being shown at which is abc and maybe will be something that will become sort of must-see TV for ABC, which hasn't been something that they haven't really done since Lost. So 
I have that kind of uh, hope to it. Uh, I mean, I could be dead wrong. It could be, it could come out and look just like how Agents of Shield looks, and that's not necessarily a knock against it, but it has that ABC sort of sheen to it, and you can kind of tell. But right. I'm hoping that it 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 does better than that, based on the fact that it, it is such a low episode count, <clears throat> and everyone else that's involved in it. Uh, Yasha, any thoughts? I um, I honestly side with you, David. I think it's kind of ridiculous to do IMAX quality on for a television show. Television show, so I'm not that interested. Actually, I think I'm just not. It's you know I feel like it's getting to be a bit much, and I, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting burnt out on that. Maybe it's because I don't know much about the Inhumans, but. I think it's a little ridiculous that they're not doing a film like they announced. So it's kind of bums me out that they're not following through with that. I think part of it is the fact that they don't think that they have a strong enough following for the Inhumans to actually make it a, fe a full feature film. Um, I just don't think they want to run the risk. So they thought they'd take a gamble on television, but they're filming it in IMAX, which like you said, doesn't really make much sense to me. So I'm indifferent. Um, I will probably watch the first three or four episodes. If it doesn't grasp me, then I probably won't watch it. But I'm listening to Bobby, you know, rattle off names, and I'm pretty clueless as to who any of those people are. So that's why I'm like, I don't have that much of an uh, uh, attachment to them. Cool. Well, with that, uh, moving on to our One Cool Thing segment. Uh, each week, uh, we go around the table. And uh, talk about something, one cool thing we've each uh, seen in uh, film, television, pop culture news this week. Something we've learned about. And uh, to get us started off, uh, Yasha, what's your one cool thing this week? <clears throat> wow, me. Okay. Well, honestly, I thought I thought David Leitch being confirmed for Deadpool 2 as a director was kind of cool. He was the director for John Wick. And... I mean, I liked, I really loved John Wick, like a lot. Like I thought that movie was fantastic. It was, yeah. Um, oh, he's directing the second one. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, no, he directed the, uncredited as the first one and directing the second one. So I, I really loved it. Um, I'm hoping that he does a good job just because um, the movie is really heavily based in humor. So I don't know how he does in humor because I'm not really that familiar with his work aside from John Wick. At least I don't think I am. Oh, well, he did stunts for a few other places, a few other things. But um, that's probably my uh, my one cool thing Like I'm because I enjoyed John Wick so much. So the action should be really, really cool. A lot of explosions. And this is a, probably a bigger production of a film that he's used to. So him doing Deadpool 2 is kind of cool. I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Uh, Bobby, what's your one cool thing this week? My one cool thing of this week is that they will finally get to see the long-awaited Spider-Man Homecoming trailer, and it's going to be attached to Rogue One. And at least that's that's the prevailing rumor theory that's out there. And um, the the why that's cool to me is because... Me, you, and Yasha were in the Hall H room when they showed Spider-Man Homecoming clips. And to me, what they put together was so spectacular, uh, no pun intended, that the fact that it really felt like Spider-Man. And I've been wanting people to see what we saw for the longest time. And knowing that it's finally here, I mean, really, literally, they could just show everybody what they showed us at Comic-Con, and I'd be happy with that. Because I thought that was so well done, and I I'm just waiting to see and and um, get that vibe from the internet once they actually see what this what the feeling and the and the um, the vibe that they're going for with this Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm, I'm excited as almost as excited to see Rogue One as I am to see what people think about Spider-Man Homecoming. So that's my one cool thing for the week. Cool. Uh, me, I think I'm next. Hey, my one cool thing. Uh, my one cool thing this week is that, uh, I've said before, I was actually a big fan of the, uh, U S theatrical version of the girl with the dragon tattoo. 
And uh, a sequel to that has been in kind of dead limbo for a long time. And uh, it seems to be moving along that now it has a director in uh, Fede Alvarez. And uh, now, as happy as I am to hear that, and I'm you know mentioning this as my one cool thing, don't get me wrong, I'm still disappointed in the fact that you know, it's pretty much guaranteed that Daniel Craig's not going to be in this. Rooney Mara is most likely not going to be in this. So it's basically going to be recast. Um, they're going with uh, not the next book in the series, but uh, I, what I believe is the first book written by a different author, uh, The Girl in the Spider's Web. But with that said, I was a big fan of that film. I'm bummed that, you know, we didn't get another film really with those same actors and I mean, same director as the first film, but uh, I'll take what I can get. And uh, I, I'm still going to go into this uh, with an open mind. So I hope it's, uh, hope it's pretty good. I'm excited to hear that uh, something, something is happening. Did you ever read the first books? The no, I, I never read the books. But I like that movie. And I never saw the, what were they, Swedish films? Yeah, yes. I believe so. Uh, and I've heard a lot of good things about them. Um, mm -hmm. But I resisted watching them because I wanted to see the David Fincher film right. with like no preconceived ideas of the story just because I knew I already knew it was happening. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to wait for the Fincher version. And then I liked it. And, you know, I've just kind of waited for another movie, even though news has never been great. Right. <laughs> that one was ever going to happen. Hmm. But uh, at least we're getting something. Yeah. You know? And all those are on Netflix. All the other the the Swedish, Swedish ones, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think even the, the David Venture one now, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I really dug that movie. I know it wasn't really that well received. It wasn't well it. received, but people that did see it enjoyed it. But it just didn't capture a ton of audiences. Nah, it's really. a very for its genre. It's very kind of dark. I think I had said when we reviewed it on this podcast that I, I could see even that character being the anti-Bond character. Like, I could see multiple movies, even beyond whatever books have been written, of, you know, of, what is it, Elizabeth Salander? Is that, am I getting the name right? Um, of that character, just, I don't know, I just really dug her, and I really, I, I like the story a lot. Right. So, anyway. Uh, Michelle, what's your one cool thing? Uh, it's not really, like, news, per se. It's really more of just, like, a fascinating fun thing um but uh so i guess so everybody here loves gardens of the galaxy i know i do no, no david yeah. does yes yeah i know Bobby. Oh, yes. right so and I, i've seen the movie multiple times i haven't seen it like a ton of times i've seen it multiple times i can say i couldn't count at this point but um as we all know you know with with marvel films and and with gardens there's there's always easter eggs you know hidden throughout all the films that you know, always fun to kind of look for. Well, so I guess it's been alluded to for quite some time, obviously, that uh, James Gunn put in multiple in the first Guardians film, and I guess one really big one. And to his knowledge, no one has really found it. Like this one really big Easter egg in the original, in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, right? So I guess this week on Twitter, you know, he gets into it sometimes with people. It's kind of fun to watch and kind of see him go on and off of Facebook and Twitter. But I guess, um, you know, he's still like, it's been years now. And it's literally been like, what, two years now? And like, people still haven't found this one big one. At least I've not told him that they've located it. So, you know, he kind of is like, yeah, he's like, it's in there, guys. Like, you just have to look. But nobody's, nobody's said anything to him. Well, then this one guy was kind of called him out and he was like, uh, let me find the quote real quick. So the quote is, um, the guy was like, do you ever plan on revealing the big Easter egg from Guardians? And he said, no. He's like, hey, I don't plan on revealing it because I, I want you to find it. And then another fan jumps in. And he's like, it doesn't exist. You're just being the ultimate troll. To which James Gunn was like, all right, let's put this to bed, kids. So he <laughs> has decided that if anybody can locate this one big, huge, giant Easter egg, it's like the big, fun, special one, and they can tell him, he will give them $100,000 out of his own money. But like, it, from my understanding, though, I think it's the other way around. What do you mean? Because that was, I think everyone was like, hey, you know, it would be cool if he gave $100,000 to someone who found it. From my understanding, he is saying he would give $100,000 if someone could somehow prove that it doesn't exist. 
which how could you ever do that like you know what i'm saying uh, yeah i mean the quote's kind of weird the, the quote yeah david's are, right i think i will agree the quote's no, weird. I actually I go with I side with Michelle. I think he, I could have sworn that he said that you know if you can find it and tell me what it is, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. Right. Hmm. So his quote, he says, "If there is no Easter egg, I will give you a hundred thousand dollars. Copy this post, and I will consider it a legally binding contract." Signed, James Gunn. So, to me, it, I mean, it's weird. It's all very bizarre. But I feel like if you were to be like, "Well, is this it?" He'd probably. Get, I think if you were to find it, he'd probably give you the money. Because I think to prove that it doesn't exist is good. how do you prove? Something well, no, exist? and that's because that's yeah. the argument I've been reading. Everyone's like, "This is cool and all," but like. It, there's no way to prove that you didn't put it there. I mean, that's not possible. So you're never going to give a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, right. And I, I, I feel like he might have just worded it very funky. Right. And that might be, yeah. Because, and, and I'll be honest, like I've watched him on Facebook a few times when he goes live. Cause he does it all the time mm-hmm. or on Twitter. And he's, he is quick. Like, he, so he's typing and writing and thinking as fast as he can to keep up with the audience. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I could see him easily typing something and it kind of coming out really awkward because he's also kind of an awkward guy, I'll be honest. Like, when you, so, I don't know. But I feel it's interesting. I feel like the whole conversation's interesting that there is this Easter egg. And he swears it's out there that nobody has yet to discover right. as a whole. I find that interesting. The $100,000 is also pretty sweet too, but you know, oh, yeah. uh, it's just, it's interesting to me that like after all this time, I mean, it's on, you, you people own it. Like people have watched this multiple times. Like, apparently nobody has found this. Really? You're kidding. Like no way. Or at least brought to his attention that they haven't found this. Right. Right. To me. Like it's it's very conceivable that somebody has seen it, but they're not the person that maybe pays attention to his Facebook and social media accounts, and right, they and haven't, you know, maybe they told another friend, but that's it. They haven't yeah. messaged him or anything, right? Because that's and that's the other thing I'll say. You know, James Gunn's really good about interacting with his fans, like trolls or not trolls. Like he'll and he he tries really hard not to to feed into the trolls, but sometimes they'll get under his skin. He'll kind of be like, all right, that's it, and he'll kind of face fight back, but. You know, for the most part, like, he really likes interacting with fans, likes getting questions. He loves being stumped by people. Like, he loves it. Like, he loves having this kind of fantasy, fun world with everybody. Like, he's he's all about it. And I think that's really awesome and cool. And it keeps him, you know, kind of anchored to the fan base, I think. And it's kind of kind of nice. So, all right. so yeah. You were going to say something, Bobby? No, I was just going to say maybe he, he is saying it in the way that we're thinking uh, in in terms of if you uh, he's saying if there isn't one I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars and to that end maybe he he will eventually just tell everybody what it is and then that's it because he's proven that there was one and he'll just tell you what it is as opposed to waiting for someone to say oh you know what um, there's not one and it's just your word against ours because you can't tell us what it is. And if we can't find something that you're not really telling us, you know, exactly how it exists, then there's no, there's nothing to win. So maybe he's just going to tell people at some point and, and give it a, a finite timeline in yeah. which he'll eventually yeah. just say, here it is. And, you know, there you go. Cool. Well, uh, those are our one cool things. Um, anybody got anything else before we get out of here? I was just going to mention the movies coming out for Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Um, so the big one is uh, Moana, and I never know if I'm saying that correctly. Actually, it's been really Moana, frustrating. Moana, Moana. I feel like I've heard it a few different ways. I, you know, listening to a lot of radio in town here, I've been heard so many people just saying Mona. And I'm like, really? Like, yeah, 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 dude, I've heard that what? so often, and it drives yeah, me up the I wall. I know it's not that. I'm like, it's Moana. Like, it's yeah. like, come on, it's Hawaii. Like, what the it's fuck? It's Hawaiian, right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Disney's Moana, the animated feature film is coming out. Yeah. So, so, and that's going to be just phew, ridiculous. That film's going to make so much freaking money. <laughs> oh God. Um, but also this weekend is Allied, uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Marion Cotillard's uh, World War II spy thing. I don't know. I'm intrigued <laughs> by this film. It, Me too. It, it, I'm intrigued because I'm I'm curious about Brad's performance in this because he's so hit or miss with me. So I'm very curious about this film. 
Um, but then also you've got Rules Don't Apply comes out and that's uh, what's his name? Warren Beatty's film. So he stars in it and directed it. And I feel like that could be I think it looks like an interesting story, but I'm curious to see how Warren Beatty is going to probably mess it all up. But, you know, and then, of course, <laughs> the new holiday classic. And I know Yash is excited about this one. Like everybody, I think all oh. three of you guys are excited for this one. But I think oh. Yash is really excited for this one. Bad oh, Santa 2. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what? yeah. 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 Oh, I never, I they never have saw a Bad daytime Santa. show because they, they usually let me go on Wednesday, the day before Christmas early. If there's a daytime show, I am going to watch it then. <laughs> like, that'll be the perfect lead into a nice long weekend. Like, I am excited. I can't wait. I can want to see that movie. Deal, deal with the family on Thursday, Friday. Kick back and relax with some Bad Santa too. Yeah, that's right. That's how that shit goes down. So yeah, that's our Thanksgiving weekend, folks. That's happening. Cool. Uh, real quick, real quick. I want to ask David: Is there a theater near you that is playing the Billy Lynn's Long Halftime? Oh, yeah. I can't remember I the name of that, that movie, but that's playing it with the 120 frame rate. What are we talking about? Sorry. Um, Billy Angley's. Lane's long halftime show walk or something with that one. It's the, the it's Ang Lee Angley's movie that came movie. out. That's got huge mix. Res- re- it's, it's just across the freaking board. But overall, I think people are not really happy with it. And I thought it wasn't coming out for two more weeks, but apparently I was thinking of something completely different because it's out. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's about the 19-year-old who's brought home for a victory tour after an apparently very harrowing Iraq battle through flashback. Anyways, it's got huge mixed... It's it's just all over the board when, when it comes to reviews and everything. And and I feel like that's very common with Ang Lee films. Like, people love them or hate them. You know, it's one of those yeah. things. So, yeah. Did you say 120 frames per second? Yeah, I'm surprised you hadn't heard about this, being the cinephile that you are. Yeah, the, no, I haven't. the whole thing is that um, Ang Lee was pushing for this movie, and he went and filmed, I think not uh, the whole movie, but there's parts of it. I think the parts where it flashes back to him in the war that's filmed uh, at 120 frame rate. And I guess he kind of got into it with the studio because they tested it, and the people weren't used to seeing that obviously. obviously and it's even more than what the hobbit was yeah that's like and that takes the hobbit and f- fuck that like that's right. yeah nothing compared to yeah yeah and so the studio wasn't behind doing the whole thing where they have to retrofit theaters and, and send right. them uh, you know yeah yeah so it, it became this whole big kind of uh, point of contention between him and the studio and he, they wanted him to change it, and he didn't. And so I was curious if there's any theaters that's actually playing it in that hundred. Because I am curious to see what it would actually look like like that. Um, but I don't know if there's any in us near us that would be playing it in that frame rate. Yeah, I have looked it up. I'm trying. I mean, normally I know in Fandango, at least like when Harry Potter came out, they would specifically label the high frame rates. Right. Mm. Uh, I don't see any theaters that are labeling it that way here in Orlando um, it is playing here but uh, so I don't know I feel like I couldn't um, see that happening outside of very large cities New York Chicago LA San Francisco so if I were to guess in the state I would say Miami would probably be the only city here in the state that would probably even have that like that's um, mm. I'm bringing I'm up an article now uh, there's only two US theaters equipped to yeah. show oh. Uh, it that way and I don't know what they are yet as I'm skimming this article but the most sense it, it's probably one in New York and one in LA yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm sure I mean, it is but yeah. yeah so no to answer your question I'm sure it's not here yeah. <laughs> not in Orlando Florida uh, yeah it ain't happening but yeah I can't imagine and yeah I'm like even though I I mean, I've heard of this movie now that I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, this looks familiar. I would have had no interest in seeing it, but I would go to a theater to see that if I could get that right. experience just to know. Right. Even though yeah. the Hobbit frame rate, I did not like at all. 
me uh, either, but yeah, um, I'm curious as to, but I would still watch this just to have the experience just to see yeah. what that's like. I would be curious. I'm actually kind of curious about this film because I, I actually kind of like some of Ang Lee's films. And so I'm curious to see this one. Although I'm not curious. It's weird. It's like, I want to see this film, but I also don't want to see this film. But like right. hearing that, it would be, it would be cool to see in that. Although I'm definitely, it's not going to happen. Did you ever see the Hobbit high frame rate stuff? I don't think I saw it in high frame. You would know yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yes, you would. <laughs> it is. So. It does. It stands out big time. Oh. Um, it's something. <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, it was the the corporate logo right off the bat. The New Line Cinema logo starts coming across the screen, and immediately <laughs> you're like, "Whoa, this is, this is different." It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's that obvious. Um, oh. Yeah. Interesting. It, you should check it out sometime. If there's another movie, I mean, I guess what the Avatar films are probably going to be that way. I think, right? Sure. I think uh, Let's go with that. Cameron's been pushing for that as well. So why would why wouldn't he push for that? Yeah. I mean, Cameron's going to push for the world with these films. He's, he's going to be like what one twenty? I'm going to do two forty. He is taking his sweet <laughs> oh, time God. on this. He's going to push for whatever technology he can throw I'm in. I'm going to have the actors in the it. theater with you. Psh. <laughs> it's gonna be a live interaction, folks. Yeah, new live stage interaction. Holograms. New thing. I'm calling it a stage production <laughs> play. What? No. SPP. That's crazy. <laughs> Anywho. Anywho. I uh, with that, I think it's time to get let out me, of here. Let me give one last quick shout out to uh, two shows I've had a, a chance to catch up on. Yeah. Um, if you're not watching out there and you want a couple of good TV shows, I would suggest Pitch on Fox and This Is Us on NBC. Very, very good. This show. Is Us, I've been, I need to catch up I've on. I've been enjoying that one. Yeah. And real quick, too, uh, maybe next episode, I was realizing earlier, like, I don't think I've ever talked about the fact that I finally finished Luke Cage. I finally finished Jessica Jones. I really no, I don't yeah. think I've, I don't think I've given opinions on that on the show yet. So yeah. Hey, man, I'm impressed. I'll do that next week. I still got to do Daredevil right. season two, but. Oh, nice. You're I still have to finish still Luke Cage. There. I got to do that, but uh, yeah, you got to watch Luke Cage. Um, with that, it's time to get out of here. As always, we would love to hear back from you. Let us know what you think by emailing us at feedback at flickereffect.com. You can find us on the various social networks, including YouTube. Uh, you can always listen to these shows on YouTube if that's your cup of tea. And uh, you can comment on those videos there as well. We would love to read your comments. Um, I'm David Lott. I'm Bobby Jackson. I'm Yasha Wilson. I'm Michelle Curry. Thanks for listening.